The following reading vlog is dedicated to my friend Donald as well as my friend Elizabeth Sagewood. Here's to you guys. Good morning, everybody. It is August 1st, and it's the first day of Garbagas, so happy Garbagas to one and all. Um, I'm on my way to work, and also, I'm going to be starting my uh, first Garbagas read today. It'll actually be an audiobook. I've probably talked about it by already by the time this uh, bit will go up, but uh, anyway, <laughs> here we go. Okay, it is extremely hot here at work. We have no AC. Luckily, we have water. We did not have water yesterday because they were doing some work outside, but uh, at least we got the water back. It's extremely hot, but I did get uh, some headway listening to uh, my first read for August. August. So, um, yeah, I'll do a check-in when I'm not at work. <laughs> Hmm. Your time has come. The moon is around the corner. <laughs> Bad thing is, you can't see the face. It's not welcome, it's unwelcome. This way. I don't know if I'll have to cut the sound out of this or not. I do because of the songs that play. And I just don't want to get flagged for songs. There's zero. It is day three of Garbagast. I'm sorry I haven't done an update. I just uh, didn't ultimately have time for it. But I am making quite a bit of headway in Lady Chatterley's Lover. Of course, it's an audio, so it's making it really easy to. And so far, I like the novel. It's something a little different than what I'm used to reading. Um, it definitely has some commentary to society and class and uh, uh, also female sexuality and there even is just a little bit of um, self-consciousness to the novel itself. Sorry about that, there was a truck that was passing by and it was getting a little noisy. So, so yeah, that's where I'm at with the novel. Um, I think I might change one of my selected readings for Garbagast and exchange it for something else, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Okay, it is the evening of day four of Garbagast, and um, I did finish my first read, which is, of course, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, and um, yeah, it was an interesting read. So, what is this book about? Well, it's about uh, a woman who um, ends up kind of growing rather bored with her marriage and kind of bored with her former life. And so she starts to seek out uh, companionship and um, other things uh, from other gentlemen. And um, her husband, who uh, was crippled during the during the war, the, the Great War, so it'd be World War One. Um, he brings up the idea of them possibly having a child. He he unfortunately cannot give it to her, and says it'd be all right if she has a child with another man. He just you know wouldn't want to know about it, and as long as it wouldn't change her love for him, and. Uh, she feels a little uneasy about that at first. Well, she ends up meeting some particular gentleman, 
and um, A Love Affair starts. And uh, this book was uh, a banned book um, until like the late 1950s, because it was written in the 1920s and it was scandalous. And I can understand why. It is very spicy, very raunchy for the time period. I mean, there's much more spicy and raunchy books now. <laughs> Uh, than there were back then, but this one, oh yeah, I can see why it was, uh, why it was banned. It is, uh, it's very well written, it's beautifully written, and you get an understanding of the characters and where they're coming from. The way it describes the sexual escapades, um, and some of the language that's used because the F word gets dropped so many times, and they, the way they talk about the sexual acts in just a conversation is, uh, is interesting. Plus it gets that whole political social thing going on as the changes were going on uh, in England and in the world really. Um, it definitely goes there which I'm sure probably raised some red flags for some people back then. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I get it. I get it. But it was still very enjoyable. There were, like I said earlier, there were a few boring parts, but this is a four-star read for me. It was very good. I definitely highly recommend it. And I was listening to it on Audible, and I actually didn't even know at the time when I found it that it was free. So I was like, oh, cool. You know, I'm definitely going to, you know, get that, you know, go ahead and just get that one. So uh, I don't know how long it's going to be free for, but... Uh, the version, I can't remember the one who does the performance, she's excellent. She, uh, she just does a really great job. And, um, so this is going to be my, uh, romance and kind of my vintage smut. But it's also going to hit another, um, tick on the bingo board. And it's a read a book with green on the cover for PAX. And so, um, this, the cover, picture, whatever you want to say for the Audible. It does have green on it, so that's my uh, green read. I don't know if it's a read that Pax would have read or not, um, but it was definitely interesting. I definitely recommend it, and um, yeah, so I'm going to be starting my paperback from Hell read soon. I'm not exactly staying with the prompts, but um, I'm using the prompts as definitely a guide. I don't know how many reads I'm going to get through because I'm going to have to wrap up my Garbagas a little early so I can get this out by the end of the month. And then um, I will probably jumpstart some reading for next month because I already know kind of what's going to happen next month. Um, but until then, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, I will get back with some more uh, bookish stuff and a few little things in between. So... Stay tuned. The Burning. What's this one? Oh, well that looks interesting. A haunting suspense story when Michael calls. Hmm. Okay, so in the footage you just saw, I was at the bookstore and I was looking at the horror section and looking for paperbacks from hell, which is a great bunch of what the horror books at my local bookstore has. And I did pick up a few. Um, I picked up The Burning by Jeff Fain. Uh, blazing horror from the depths of hell. So it's like literally got hell mentioned in it. That's an interesting little cover. And that is not the price that I paid for it. That's an, This came from Walmart. I think this is from the 80s. Um, when I was picked it up and looked at it. Yeah, it's the one that has um, the uh, copyright date is entirely in Roman numerals. But it's 1981. So uh, I thought that one sounded interesting. 
And then what else did I pick up here? Oh yes, I picked up, I have the first, I have the other one to this uh, with a different cover completely. Uh, I picked up a point horror from the early 90s, 1991, and that is The Girlfriend by R.L. Stein. I have The Boyfriend in a later edition cover, so don't know what this is about, you know, uh, when she was good, she was very good, but when she was bad, she was murder. <laughs> and it says, be mine always with the blood and the rose. It's lovely. And then I got one more, and this was actually the first book I picked up, and I do believe it appears in the footage, and it is Invisible Fire by Pat Graverson. Rockabye, rockabye. Who will be the next to die? So, I don't know if you can see, there's a cat that she's holding. I'm gonna have to wipe these books off because they're kind of old and stuff. But yeah, and this one came out, I think in the 80s, maybe it was 70s. No, 1981, same year as the other uh, adult horror book. And then I also, now I didn't get this one recently, I actually had picked this one up a while back, but I had forgotten to even share it. And it is Satan's Child by Peter Saxon, a tale of horror in the eerie tradition of Rosemary's Baby. And uh, it's a little scuffed up and stuff of her age, but um, yeah, it definitely uh, looks trashy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what is the year for this one? Oh! Well, this is not a paperback from Hell. It's from 1968, but it definitely would fit for Garbagus, though, so uh, I was wrong about that. But anyway, that's what I got, and uh, yeah, let's uh, see what I get on to next, and I'll be getting ready to start my uh, next read, my paperback from Hell, very, very soon. A little break from Garbagus to read some spiritual stuff. Okay, it is day 10. I haven't really updated for a bit. We just saw the last voyage of the Demeter, and it wasn't bad, it wasn't terrible, it was interesting. I have to agree with the mixed to average reviews that it's getting so far, so. But anyway, I'm um, currently over halfway through The Hellbound Heart, and hoping to finish it this weekend so I can start my novelization. Uh, soon. Okay, so like I said, it's day 11 of Garb August, and I am really close to finishing The Hellbound Heart. I haven't read a ton lately, or I probably would have been probably done with it by now. Um, I just finished watching Regina's video. It's the last one talking about the V.C. Andrews Dawn series, and uh, yeah, it really makes me want to read V.C. Andrews again. It's been so long since I read V.C. Andrews. The last one I read was uh, Garden of Shadows, I think it's called. It's the, um, the one about the grandmother and flowers in the attic. <sighs> it's been a while. I, I really want to pick a V.C. Andrews book, but I've already got plans. <sighs> I'm trying to stick to plan. I'm trying. Spooky Halloween cookie stamps. You can pick something on Last night, uh, this was all foggy. I did not get to have any footage of it, though. Oh, there's a little family of ducks. We gotta be quiet, they're sleeping. Oh, and there's a fish over there.
there's a bat house. This is in the fairy cave, by the way. The Talking Rocks Cave. Okay, it is the morning of day 14, um, back home from our little weekend getaway, and I'm getting ready to go to work, and I will be starting uh, The Angel Chronicles Volume 2 for my novelization, and yeah, so hopefully I'll keep up and be able to read more this week. I didn't read as much last week as I thought I would, but that's fine, so uh, yeah. All right, welcome back. It is day 16 of Garbagist, and I've inlaid, you know, spooky uh, shopping, Halloween shopping throughout this entire video. Well, now I'm going to show you some of the stuff I got, and some of the stuff is stuff that I got at the ending of last month uh, when I went spooky shopping, and um, what I've picked up along the way, a few of these things were bought for me. They were gifts actually bought and then given to me. Um, and oh, well, one of the things I got, these little bottles, uh, they're downstairs, I forgot to bring up with me, but I figured they'd be a little hard to show in the video, because they're only, like, so big and so wide each, they're still in the package, and they stay, say stuff along the lines of, like, uh, wing of bat, and, um, stuff like that, but, uh, this is just gonna be a bit random, so anyway, um, we have this, 
uh, I don't know how well you're going to see it. It's all in black. It's a little hard to see. It's a Raven uh, candle holder that I got. Hopefully when I brighten the footage, it'll make it easier to see. There. That's, that's a little better. It's all glittery, and I've already gotten some of the glitter on my hands from this. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put all this. <laughs> um, ooh, this. Um, we'll go ahead and go with this. This is another candle holder, and this is from Bath and Body, and this is the goblet and skulls and spiders on it and the blood coming out. And uh, this was actually gifted to me. I didn't even see this when I first went in and looked at their Halloween stuff, so I was really shocked and amazed to see it, and it is just absolutely gorgeous. So, Oh, there's also bats on it. <laughs> I didn't even realize. Oh, my. Well, anyway. So I don't know where I'm going to put all this stuff yet. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be up here or where it's going to be initially. But um, I'll, you know, I'll figure something out. Um, oh, next uh, we have this little skeleton guy. And I'm thinking he'll go somewhere up here. I'm just not sure where. And he his eyes light up and he makes sound. I don't know how it's going to pick up, but uh, here we go. I know it goes on for a while. I think it does stop eventually, but, um, it, oh yeah, it's also motion activated, so I don't know how well that's going to go, so, um, if I do hang it up in here, I probably won't have the motion sensor on because I'm afraid that, you know, during the videos, it'll go off and it'll get annoying, so, but, yeah, we'll see. Ooh, I also got this, uh, little masquerade mask DIY so I'll probably paint this and I think I have costume idea this year and so yeah we'll see how that goes all right what else do I have Ooh, I got this at Michael's and I actually got another one as a gift for somebody and it's a little coffin box and it opens up has a little uh, little shutter thing here a little clasp and it lights up I think I have to take the tab out. Yeah, I do. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. Had to have that. That was really cool. They also had ones that you could just paint that had no designs cut into them at all. I'm gonna, I might paint this, actually. Um, it had no designs in it, and it uh, kind of it had no lights either. But I really liked this one. I wanted one that lit up, so... It's got bats on it, it's got jack o' lanterns it's got pumpkins, it's got boo, so. Alright. Oh, I also got this at Michael's, too. And it's a brand new cup. It is, uh, it is, uh, food safe, I do believe, right? Right? <laughs> it said warning inside. So I literally looked inside the cup and the tag. I don't know where my brain is. Yes, it is food safe. Uh, hand wash only. Do not use in microwave, oven, or dishwasher. Why would you use this in the oven? That just sounds silly to me. Um, but yeah, I don't have a dishwasher anyway. I prefer washing dishes by hand anyhow. But, you know, it's black and it's white and it has a bat inside. Now, they did have one that was the opposite. It was white on the side, black on the inside, and it said, you have been poisoned, which I thought was really cool. But I liked the black outside with the white inside, though. So, and of course, I love bats. So I was just like, uh, yes, I'm getting this. So I will be using this for sure. Who knows? It might appear in a video. I don't usually bring stuff to drink in videos. And if I do, it's off camera. You never see me drink from it anyway. But... I might. I might now. Um, oh, this was also a gift. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. Um, it's a tree topper. And it's a bat. It's one of those springy ones. No idea what I'm going to do with this. Uh, I'll figure out something. If anybody has any suggestions. I don't have a tree. I don't put up one of those Halloween trees. I'm not opposed to them at all. I just don't have one and I don't put one up. Um... But I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. If anybody has any suggestions, please do tell. And then the last little thing here that I actually brought up 
or brought in is this. And I thought this was so cool. Uh, this was another thing. I had seen it before, and then I went back and showed somebody. This was at the Dollar Tree. And they are like, they thought it was really cool. They got them one, and they, they bought two, and they gave me one. So I was not expecting that. Um, but I am very pleased that I got one. <laughs> and it is a uh, mechanical 3D wooden box. It is a bat. You put it together, and it shows the motion here. And it has gears at the back of it, you can see down here. And you turn them, and the bat flaps its wings. They had a bird, too, of some sort. It's probably a, a crow or something. But that's so cool. I don't know how this is going to go. It does have some little screws in it, and a dowel rod, and little plastic thingies. I don't know how, how this is going to go, but I'm hoping it will go well. And I'm hoping I can you know, put it together. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Unless I put it on my desk over there. But, you know, who knows? Anyway, so that's what I got, and I'm still reading my novelization. Um, I know I still have yet to talk about uh, Hellbound Heart, which I'll pro I might just lump them together and talk about them together. I've been a little behind. I've had, uh, since I got back from uh, the weekend getaway, I've been working. There's been other things um, that I've been dealing with. I've been trying to write my poem because I hadn't gotten so very much time to work on it. Um... I mean, if that went through, if, if I got it finished and stuff, that'll up, be up before this video. And, uh, so yeah, there's been some things interrupting my reading, but, you know, hopefully. If not, I'll continue into next week, which is when I will finish this, uh, vlog up. So, anyway. Okay, it is, um... Day 21, I had to stop and think about that one. It's day 21 of Garbagist, and I just finished my uh, third, and this will probably be my last read for Garbagist. I don't know if I'm going to really get to anything else, um, because I want this uh, vlog to get up, you know, uh, by the end of this week, so Saturday the 26th is when you are seeing this. And, uh, yeah, so I finished last weekend, not the weekend we just had, um, The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker and, uh, excellent. Um, I gave it, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this, I gave it four and a half stars, almost five stars, I don't know, I'm kind of gripped between four and a half and five, because it was really good, it was very well written, um, it's not at all what, how I thought his style would be, because I haven't read anything in Clyde Barker till now, and so uh, I wasn't really sure what I was in for. Now, of course, I've seen Hellraiser and the uh, the reboot of Hellraiser as well, both based off this book or novella. Of course, the original film follows the story uh, more than the reboot. The reboot, I think, just takes the idea and concept of it and rolls with it. The original film... Um, is a pretty faithful adaptation, and it's written and directed by Clive Barker himself. Um, it emphasizes the uh, Hell Priest character, the uh, Cenobite with the pins and the grid on the face, who of course we know as Pinhead, um, actually makes him kind of the leader of the Cenobites as opposed to how it is in the story, where that character is only seen very briefly. And um, it also changes some of the relationships of the characters and adds a, you know, a few little things here and there. But uh, it's a very good adaptation. I'd highly recommend it. Um, I will say there is something that I liked a little bit more in the film, and that was the relationship between Kirsty and um, Rory. In the uh, movie, they're father and daughter, whereas in this, they're just good friends, and she's secretly in love with Rory. But... Uh, Still, uh, I think it added a different element of tension than the book had, but the book is very good. It is gory, um, it is twisted, it's, uh, it's kind of a crazy book, but I highly recommend it, uh, definitely. And then I also, um, just finished reading this last night, and this is, of course, as you've already seen, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Angel Chronicles Volume 2. Actually, this was given to me earlier this year by uh, Zach at Shadyside Library, so thank you again, Zach. Um, I finally got to another one, and um, it was very good. It's a novelization of uh, three episodes, more or less 
two stories, really, because the second one's a two-parter. The first one is Halloween uh, from Season 2 of Buffy, and then the other two is What's My Line Parts 1 and Part 2, which are combined into one story. So it's like... It's like a... Kind of like two novellas put together, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Um, it's very close to the stories that you see in the show. There are a few minor details that are a little different, but for the most part, it's like spot on. And the epilogue, the, the final epilogue, because there's like three epilogues to this, um, the final epilogue is an added thing that we don't get to see at all in any of the episodes, and the prologue at the beginning is uh, completely created for this. I forgot to mention, this book is written by Richie Tankersley Cusick, which of course is one of my favorite YA authors, and I wish she had written more Buffy books. She's She wrote the novelization for the original film, she wrote the novelization for the first two episodes, The Harvest, well, Welcome to the Hellmouth on The Harvest, um, and she wrote this novelization, so I think she only wrote three. Uh, maybe she wrote another one and I'm just not aware of it or I forgot, but, um, uh, this is like the third Buffy book that I've read this year, because I reread The Harvest earlier this year. I read One Girl in All the World, and I've read this one, so my return to the Buffyverse. I'm hoping to maybe get to return to the Buffyverse at least one more time this year, uh, but we'll see. But this is definitely a good Halloween read, because we get... Buffy's first Halloween in Sunnydale, so. But yeah, my first time reading our Angel's Chron an Angel Chronicle, and I think there's only three of these uh, in existence. And I'm not a big fan of Angel, just like Elizabeth Sagewood. She says it uh, probably the best way I've heard it. Uh, he's a schmuck, and yes, I have to agree, he is. Uh, yeah, not a big fan of Angel. Spike's my, my favorite, and he is very prominent in both the stories in this book, so. So anyway, uh, that is my Garbogist uh, reading blog. Thank you to everybody who's watching, and also thank you to Criminali for creating Garbogist. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, what did everybody else read? Please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys read for Garbogist. And uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm going to be reading next. I have a couple buddy reads coming up. I think next month is the plan. And, um, also next month is Vamptember, so I'm going to be participating in that. I don't know if that's really going to be an event event, but it's a theme for the month, so I'm definitely going to be doing that. And, um, yeah, so, uh, oh, I did start reading something today, but I'm keeping that a secret for now, so, unless you follow me on Goodreads, um, that'll be a secret. They'll be coming around in about a little over a month from now, so, anyway. Anyway, uh, stay safe, stay spooky, and until next time, bye-bye, and happy Garbagist.